This module is called Ghost Lua, and it defines the behavior and appearance of a ghost enemy in the game. The ghost can chase the player, check for collisions, and draw itself on the screen with a unique color and shape. We start the ghost module by creating a new table called Ghost. This will hold all the ghost related functions and data. We set ghost dot double underscore index and assign it to ghost. This line is important because it enables object oriented behavior in Lua. It tells Lua that if we try to access a method or property that is not directly found in a ghost instance, it should look it up in the ghost table instead. This way, all ghost objects can share the same behavior without repeating code. The ghost new function is the constructor. It lets us create a new ghost by passing in its position, size, and color. It takes six parameters, X and Y for the ghost's position, size, for how big it is, and optional red, green, and blue values for its color. We return a new table using setMetaTable, which turns this table into an object of the ghost class. It includes the X and Y position, the size, a speed of 100, and the color, with default values of 1 if red, green, or blue are not provided. By setting the meta table to ghost and using double underscore index, we make sure this new ghost can use all the methods defined in the ghost module. The ghost chase function is responsible for making the ghost move toward a target, usually the player. It takes four arguments, the target's x and y position, the time delta, and a list of obstacles to avoid. First, we calculate the difference between the ghost's current position and the target by subtracting the ghost's x and y from the target's x and y. This gives us the direction stored as dx and dy. We find the distance to the target using the Pythagorean theorem. We use the MathMax function to make sure the distance is never zero. This prevents dividing by zero later. We calculate the ghost's next position, nx, and ny, by moving it a bit closer to the target. We normalize the direction, scale it by speed and dt, and add it to the ghost's current position. Now we check if the ghost's new position would collide with any obstacles. We call obstacles as colliding and pass in the new x and y values along with the ghost's size. 
If there is no collision, meaning the ghost can safely move, we update the ghost's position by setting self X and self Y to NX and NY. If there is a collision, the ghost simply stays in place this frame. This keeps the ghost from moving through walls or objects, making the chase behavior feel more realistic. The ghost is colliding function checks if the ghost is touching another circular object, like the player or another ghost. It takes in the position, px, and py of the other object and its radius, r. We calculate the distance between the ghost and the object using the standard distance formula, the square root of the difference in x squared plus the difference in y squared. Finally, we compare that distance to the sum of both radii, the ghost's size, and the object's radius. If the distance is smaller, that means the two circles are overlapping, so a collision has happened, and we return true. If they are far enough apart, there is no collision, and we return false. The ghost draw function is responsible for drawing the ghost on the screen. Right at the top, we create three local variables x, y, and s. These are just shortcuts for the ghost's position and size, self x, self y, and self size to keep the code cleaner and easier to read as we draw. First, we set the color to black using Love Graphics Set Color. This is for the outline of the ghost. Next, we draw the ghost's body. We use Love Graphics Ellipse, which creates an ellipse outline. The position is given by x and y, and the size is based on s. We multiply the size by 0.9 to make the ellipse slightly smaller than the full size of the ghost. Then, we draw the bottom part of the ghost's body using Love Graphics Arc. This creates a curved arc instead of a full circle. We position it just below the main body, set the radius to match the ellipse, and draw it from pi, and end at 2 times pi. This means we are drawing the bottom half of the circle, which creates the curved base of the ghost's body. Next, we set the ghost's color. Self color is the color we passed in when creating the ghost, which is stored as a table with red, green, and blue values. We draw the ghost's body using Love Graphics Ellipse. This fills the ellipse with color, similar to how we drew the outline before, but now it is a solid shape. 
we position it at x and y and use the size of s multiplied by 0.9 for the width and s for the height to make it match the shape we outlined earlier. Finally, we use Love Graphics Arc to fill the bottom half of the ghost's body with the same color, completing the ghost's form. We set the color to black again, but this time for the ghost size. Then, we draw the left eye using Love Graphics Circle. We place it slightly to the left and above the center of the ghost. We use S divided by 4 for the radius of the eye to keep it proportional to the ghost's size. The same process is repeated for the right eye, but we place it on the opposite side of the ghost. Finally, we use Return Ghost to return the ghost module, making it available for use elsewhere in the game. We did complete the fourth module in our simple game where we created the ghost class. We did learn how to define the ghost's properties, make it chase a target, check for collisions, and draw it on the screen with a color and eyes. This module sets up the basic behavior and appearance of the ghosts in our game.